Hey everyone, Chris here. Today I'm going to be going over my electrical system setup inside of my cargo trailer conversion. Uh, I'm going to be going over all the components that are inside, how I wired them up, uh, as long as a list down below this video of the breakdown of the cost, where I got it from, website, all that, if anybody's interested. Um, I'm going to be going over what this system gives me as far as power. Um, gives me AC and DC and then uh, I'm gonna be going over some lessons learned um, and then hopefully this will give you an idea of what you want to set up in yours or a similar system whether it be boat RV whatever you're working on maybe this is just a helpful learning video for you either way I hope, hope I can help you out all right So getting straight into it, starting with the batteries, we have two batteries here. Um, they're 100 amp hour each, they're the Mighty Max batteries. I actually picked those up from Walmart at $199.95 each. Uh, shipping was free, so they came in the mail. They are a little heavy, uh, about 68 pounds each. Um, so off of the batteries, what I did was I connected positive, positive, negative to negative which puts the batteries in series, not parallel. Um, what this does is it just increases my 12 volt capacity. Um, if I put them in parallel, it would turn it into a 24 volt system. I don't need 24 volt, I need 12 volt, or I wanted 12 volt. Um, so off of the batteries, um, it comes to these two large wires, all right? You got a red and black, so positive. And a negative and that comes to my inverter it's a 2200 watt pure sine wave inverter with a solar controller i went with this one because uh, it gives me the ability to possibly upgrade to solar in the future um, and add some panels there is a uh, max input on solar which is 20 amps or 300 watts um, so i can i couldn't go over that with this inverter but what it'll do is it'll actually take the solar panels in to the front here, and it'll help distribute that power either to the inverter or back to the batteries to charge them. Um, it's got a, uh, I guess, battery tender is what you, I don't know what the actual term is for solar. Um, it's not an NPPT, if you guys are looking into those. Um, I still recommend one of those. Um, this wouldn't be the ultimate solution, but it is a possible solution. So after the inverter, uh, I obviously have a ground cable that comes from the inverter and connects to the trailer frame on the side. All of my ground cables go into a hole back here um, to the trailer frame and all connect to the same point. And then I used a multimeter to test the ground. Um, also coming off the battery, we'll go with positive tide. So positive side comes up to a marine um, battery switch. It's basically just a quick master disconnect switch uh, it's rated all the way up to 48 volts, but it allows me to shut off all the DC power coming out of the batteries um, other than the, than the inverter. Um, the inverter is what I would probably primarily use on the road for if I needed my air conditioning unit or I wanted to cook something with like an induction cooktop. Uh, so right now the only DC power that's coming off of it is for my lights. And so I installed a um, fuse box up here and off the fuse box is my vent fan and then my switch panel for all my lights um, the switch panel has one fuse the vent fan has another fuse with the ability to expand about 20 more slots it's a little overkill as far as fuses box size go I would probably go with a smaller one which would make things cheaper um, that fuse box I think was $35 or right around there uh, I'll try and find that and put it down below. On the other side, off of DC, we have a shunt, which allows me to measure my um, current voltage, battery usage, and, and amps. It's called an LCD display digital current voltage power energy meter, uh, multimeter and meter voltmeter, whatever. It's it's basically tells you how much power you're drawing, how much batteries, how much power is in the batteries still, like what the voltage of the batteries is. 
how much energy you have in watt hours. Um, I don't know how accurate it is, but it'll give me a little bit of an essay on what's going on in my batteries um, and uh, tell me how much I'm currently drawing or how much current I am currently drawing. <laughs> Anyways, uh, moving back from the batteries again, we have a positive cable. It, it's four gauge. Um, for the four gauge wire I found only came in black. So what I did was I took red tape and taped it up anywhere that's four gauge on the positive side so that I know 100% looking at it, okay, that's a positive wire. It's connected to the positive, so it's hard to mistake, but coming off there, it goes into this Intel power. Um, what that is is a, uh, it's a converter charger with charge wizard. So what that does is it allows me when I go to a campsite or I'm at the house, I can plug that into DC or AC power and it converts AC power to DC to charge my batteries. It's got a smart, it's the charge wizard inside and it, what it does is it um, charges the batteries differently depending on what they need. It's got a float charge when they're basically fully charged and it just needs to do a little bit of charging. Um, it's got a rapid charge. And then it's got a manual mode where I can go in there and I can say, hey, I want the batteries to be at this voltage and it'll set, you know, it'll charge the batteries to that voltage. Uh, I'm gonna move the camera so you guys can see the AC side. So coming over here to the AC side of the house, you have a breaker box, which I'll open for you. And on the AC side of the house, we have this wire, which is coming from a 30 amp hookup outside of the trailer, right? So a 30 amp comes in and it breaks out into two 15 amp breakers. Um, black wire goes into the top here, and then I made a little bridge to the second one. Not recommended for any home use, but it's fine for trailer. I'm not a professional electrician, this is just how I did it. Um, if you don't feel comfortable with this, I would uh, ask a professional electrician. Uh, white goes over here to this guy, and comes down basically and breaks out to all your um, electrical outlets through here. Uh, and then your blacks or your electrical outlets go on the bottom side of this. And then all my grounds go here. Um, and that wire coming in has a ground slot so that the trailer will be grounded AC side. After that, I have it coming out to here to this first outlet. And this is my rear side. So both this outlet or this outlet down here is connected to this. And then on the other side of the trailer, I have an outlet and that's connected to the rear. So both of my rear outlets are on one breaker, which is this guy. And then both of my front outlets are on this breaker. So you can see that this breaker actually follows this cable down into that hole. Whereas this breaker comes over here, goes back up through the walls and it goes up here, keeps going up over to the other side. Whereas this wire comes straight from the breaker, goes through the walls, and it actually goes up to there, and then over to there. So I have two fronts and two rears. Now, the good part about the AC outlet right there is that I can take my IntelliPower charge cable when I'm hooked up to the um, campsite, and just plug it straight into here. And that's the whole reason why I put one in here was for that. Um, just so that it can charge my batteries straight off this box in here. And three outlets is plenty um, for this tiny cargo trailer. Um, and uh, whenever I leave the campsite, all I gotta do is just flip these breakers down with the cover on it, obviously. Um, and uh, this thing will shut off and then I'll be running solely on DC and then uh, I'll be able to go from there. Um, this is a look at the charge controller I was talking about. It's pretty simple. Um, let me turn some things on so you can see how it starts to uh, show the different power that's being used. I'll go ahead and turn on some lights. I got my rear, middle, front, and then I have an exterior light, but you can't see that. And then right next to it, I have a vent fan. I'm going to turn that on. It's a uh, fantastic fan. Uh, it's got on manual right now if i set it to auto it's probably going to shut off because it's pretty cold outside now yeah see how quiet it just got um and it's still dropping but anyway you can see that now we're pulling two amps 
Uh, my battery voltage dropped a little bit because that's float voltage. So I'm using two amps right now, 26.8 watts. And my total battery power that it thinks I have is 1,342 watt hours, which is a lot. But So basically this fan will be able to run for a very long time. I, I haven't tested the actual length of time, but a pretty, pretty long time. Um, and then next to that, down here I have my inverter on off switch. So I just simply turn that on and my inverter turns on 12.8 volts and I can plug anything I want into that inverter. And that's the basic system setup. Here's a little better view inside so you can see how things are wired up. So here's your positive side. You can see that big four gauge cable connecting the two positives. And then on the back you can see the big black cable going from the two uh, negatives. And then both of those go up to the IntelliPower. And then here's the positive going into the master switch. The DC switch, sorry. And then you have the negative going into the shunt. The shunt is used by this so it knows how much power is being drawn. And there's also a positive wire that comes up to the shunt. And you can see here's my DC fuse panel. And I went ahead and labeled um, like you can see on that red on the left and the black on the left, they say vent. So I know where those go. And then you have your um, positive going to your inverter, negative going to inverter. And then you have a ground cable back there, the black cable that's going to come up here. And they all go over there into that hole and connect to the frame. And then it also comes off that guy. And this guy right there in the front, you can see the ground cable coming off this guy into there. And then a little bit bigger view of the AC side of the house. All right, guys. Well, that's an overview of my electrical system. Hopefully, I can answer some questions, or that did answer some questions. Um, I'm going to go over a few recommendations now uh, that the video is coming to an end. Um, you've seen my setup. You can kind of probably start building your setup similar to mine. Um, biggest recommendation is to have all the components prior to starting the wiring. Uh, I started wiring before I had my two batteries. I didn't know what size I wanted to go with, whether it was 200 amp hour single battery, 100 amp hour multiple batteries. Um, I ended up going with 100 hour uh, just because of uh, ease of movement. So these are 68 pounds each, pretty heavy batteries. Um, I'm not the only one that's going to be living in this thing or part-time living, camping in this thing. Um, also, I'm a girlfriend, small girlfriend, so ease of movement. So I guess, I mean, the likelihood of us having to take a battery out is pretty slim, but it's just easier just to have two lighter batteries than one really heavy battery. Um, I also only got two with the ability to expand to three. I kind of built this cabinet down here. It's a separate piece than the rest of the trailer. I can actually pull it out if I disconnect everything. Um, pull it completely out, go work on it in the garage kind of thing. Um, it's pretty modular. It's not something you have to do, obviously. It's just something I did so that I could take this out in the future if I want to completely change up the whole layout, whatever. Um, and then, so that's how I did mine uh, as far as modular goes. Um, it's semi-modular. It would probably take me a few hours to get this thing out, but it works. Um, also, I would try and get four gauge wire that you can actually get in red instead of doing red tape over the four gauge wire. Um, it's not like it doesn't work. It's just uh, be more identifiable if you had red wire versus black wire with red tape. Uh, a little bit safer, I guess. Uh, and then uh, make sure you uh, have plenty of spare wire tips. Uh, whatnot because I had to make multiple runs in the store. <laughs> I'll, uh, it's just, I don't know, one of those things. You just gotta do it. But, uh, yeah. Hi. Are you doing a video? I was. I'm sorry. It's okay. I'll edit it. No. Anyways, sorry about that. Um, so recommendations, like I said, have all the components, batteries, and all that. Uh, the correct wiring, um, cable tips, plenty of cable tips. The multiple store runs to get extra tips was getting really annoying. Um, and then 
a good cable management. Uh, cable management is going to be huge. I use these little uh, white hook things that you nail in. They work. They're just kind of annoying to try and get a hammer in there into some of those angles. Um, that's about it for my recommendations. Maybe, uh, maybe you can come up with some from my system. I'd love to hear about it. And uh, anybody else that's done this and has recommendations for me. Obviously, like I said, my system is modular, so I can change it at any time. And uh, improvements are always recommended or appreciated, I guess. Um, and if you, get, if you guys have any questions, feel free to comment below and ask me those questions. I'll try and get back to them as soon as I can, even if it's making another video. Um, I, I'm new to this, so uh, hopefully this helps. Let me know what I can do to improve, and uh, I will greatly appreciate it. Anyways, have a great day. See you guys.